Hello! In this video, we're going to talk about using the Euler method to solve differential equations numerically. So in physics world, we often encounter a differential equation that might look something like this. dx dt is equal to some function v of t here, and we want to solve this differential equation. But sometimes we can't always solve it by hand. We're going to have to solve it numerically. So how do we do that? The first thing we do is we do the reverse of calculus and we consider the dx dt as a finite difference, delta x over delta t, equal to our function v of t. And now let's solve for that delta x by multiplying delta t onto the other side. And what I really want to do is I want to be able to figure out what my new x position is, or my new x coordinate as a solution, if I start with some initial condition. And so I'm going to write that delta x as a final minus an initial for an interval, and then solve for the final of that interval. And so the final x position in some interval is equal to the initial x position plus v of t times delta t. And this works for lots of really small intervals uh, for our function v of t and allows us essentially to integrate this differential equation using small intervals delta t. So what does this end up looking like? So this is the technique of Euler's method. So I imagine that I start at some initial point, t0 and x0, and I know what the slope or the function is there, v of t, at that initial condition. And so using that slope, I can predict what my new coordinate is going to be, x1, by saying it's x0 plus v, the slope, times delta t, just taking a straight line approximation. The new t coordinate is just the original t coordinate plus delta t, just shifting over by a small amount of delta t. So now I figured out my next point, t1 and x1, so I can go on to another point, starting at this point. So if I know what the slope is at that point, at t1, then I can predict where the next point is going to be, again, by using a straight line approximation to figure out where t2 and x2 is going to be. And I can do this, so on and so forth, to create a series of points which is going to be an approximation to the solution to this differential equation. So it's essentially a, an approximation to the integral of this differential equation. Now, of course, this works better if I take delta t to be smaller and smaller. Uh, and for any finite amount of delta t, there's going to be a bit of a difference between what I get using this Euler's method and what the actual solution ends up being. But if I take delta t smaller and smaller, I can get closer and closer to that actual solution. So what does this look like for a computer? So if I want to tell a computer to do this, I have to give it a set of instructions that a computer knows how to handle, and a set of calculations that a computer knows how to handle. So for this example, I'm going to be considering the ordinary differential equation dx dt is equal to 5 times t, and x at t equal to 0 is equal to 0. So then I have these sets of instructions here, but I want to break down these sets of instructions by their different segments so that we can talk about what is happening. The first line tells me the number of steps I'm going to choose in the calculation. This is something you get to pick when you do your calculation, when you set up your code. If you pick a larger number of steps, then you're going to have more accuracy, because as we're going to see, the delta t is going to be smaller and smaller for more steps. But if you have more steps, that means more calculations. So that means that the calculation is going to take longer. So choose wisely. Generally, you choose an end step as large as possible that uh, your code finishes in a reasonable amount of time, or that your answer is within a given amount of accuracy. The next segment of code here is the initial conditions. So I'm setting the initial time to zero, and I'm setting the final time to 10. So that wasn't in my setup here, but what I'm essentially doing is solving this differential equation between the times zero and 10. My delta t, which I wrote here as dt, is then I take the t final time minus the initial time, and then divide it by the number of steps. So we can see that if we increase the number of steps here, we will decrease the step size, and we'll have a smaller dt, which means we'll be more accurate. And then I also choose the initial position at t equal to 0 to be 0, as we said up above. 
The next block here, I have my function v of t, which is 5 times t. So that's the right-hand side of the differential equation that I'm going to be using to solve here. And that's just a convenient thing to do. You don't have to put that here. You can put it down in a later block of the code without defining a function. But it's a lot easier to, hear, to do here, and it's a lot um, easier to see what's going on. And then I'm just going to have a separate set of lines here to set my initial conditions so that t is equal to ti and x is equal to xi. So this is starting my code, essentially. Finally, we actually get down to the real heart of this code, of the Euler method code, which is a loop. And so this while block is running a loop, and it's going to keep running through these instructions until the phrase after while is... Uh, is false. So once t is greater than tf, then the loop will stop and then the calculation will stop. So what's running in the loop is, so the first line, I'm going to update the x position. And so I have x is equal to x plus v of t times dt. So the x on the right-hand side is the old x, and then the x on the left-hand side is going to be the new x. And so this is updating my x value. I don't have x1s and x naughts here. Uh, in fact, uh, this is a lot easier. I don't even have to keep track of which one is which. This is just continually updating the x coordinate as I go. And then I have the t coordinate is also continuously updating, just as we saw for the Euler method technique that we had written on the physics world side. And then just so I can see what's going on here, I'm going to print the t and x coordinates so I can see what the calculation is actually doing. So when you run this code, what it'll do is it will run through this loop until t is equal to tf, and then I find this output for my data. Maybe it helps if we see what this looks like graphically. So if I plot this graphically, I have my Euler solution to this differential equation, the numerical solution, and I've also plotted the exact solution to this differential equation, because of course we can exactly solve this differential equation. And we can see that they're a little bit off. And if I wanted to increase the accuracy of the Euler method, I could increase the number of steps. And indeed, if I increase the number of steps to 100, I can see that the Euler method and the exact method are looking pretty darn close now. Um, but again, they're a little bit off. And if I wanted even more accuracy, I can keep increasing the number of steps and so on until I reach the desired level of accuracy. Okay, I hope this gives you an idea of how we could use Euler's method and input it into a computer to numerically solve a differential equation.